All right, uh, Bob, um, AI-driven support. Um, this has been a passion for you. Uh, let's, uh, let's roll through that. Yeah, thank you, Steer. So yeah, so this is my big challenge right now is that we, my claim is that NIST is the only vendor right now that's using its AI ML engine to answer every support ticket that comes into its system. You know, and what I found in actually building Marvis last year, what's critical beyond just the algorithms, the AI ML algorithms, there's really the organizational part of it. And this is where Jishong and David J, who runs our customer, they, every week, they get together and they review every support ticket that Marvis was not able to answer. You know, and that is a key to getting the efficacy of Marvis and really getting to championship level is I think MIST is the only company right now that has its customer support team and its data science team tied to the hip, basically improving the efficacy of Marvis. And what's key about this is when you think about customer support right now, especially with cloud and AI, David J and our customer support team represents our largest customers, right? You know, we see every device out there, we have all the data. So David J is actually the proxy for our customers. You know, if we can make David J happy and our customer support team happy, we are making our customers happy. And so this is basically the goal of our marvelous Yavisky loop is really driving that. So Darian, maybe you can show the results of, the, of two years of efforts. Yeah, talk to this, You know what, this is the graph here. You, this is what happens after two weeks. This graph here highlights Marvis answering support tickets every week. You know, and what you see going up and down, right? You see us averaging getting Marvis better every, every over time. But those down pipes represents is those are weeks of questions that Marvis couldn't answer, right? You know, we got support tickets where Marvis was not able to answer them. That's where G-Sharing your team basically gets with customer support, figures out why Marvis can't answer it, adds the framework, adds the data to answer those questions. And now we're at that 65% for that over 60% of every ticket that comes into MIST right now, Marvis can either nails the answer or has some data that helps get the answer quicker, right? And this is basically being, bringing Marvis as that assistant. It's not replacing the wireless eye engineer. You still need the wireless engineer to make sense of things. It's just making his job quicker and making it easier for him to actually get to the data he needs to get to quickly. Hey, Bob, I, I have a question on that. If we're at 60, 65% now, what, what's the arc of that? Where did it start? Where, when do you think it'll get above 80, 90%? Well, I think right now, I think the next step is what I said, you know, when you look at, I say like self-driving cars and Watson, the next big thing we're adding right now is this graph database framework. This is gonna let us basically get to the root cause of a whole nother series of problems, right? Mutual information was really the first big step and it got to like what features, like is the OS causing the problem or DHCP server? And that solved a whole bunch of support tickets. What this graph database is gonna let us do is really get down to that misconfiguration use case, right? When someone screws up the router or switch on the other side of the network, it's really hard to tell if that screwed up the user experience. You know, and this is what's happened to us in real life, right? We get a call from a customer saying, hey, you know, your POC is not working, Bob, you know, your wireless, you know, devices aren't connecting, you know, you know, you're screwed up. And it's like, it's not us, you know, what it turned out is someone misconfigured a router somewhere on the other side of the network. So it went past large MTU packets, right? But that took a long time to connect those two dots. This is where the graph database will connect those dots quickly. You know, user has a problem, you know, hey, someone over here on the other side of the company or the other side of the org has misconfigured something. And so, that is why every time we work on this, that's the last 40% of those tickets, the graph database will basically probably take, you know, 10 or 15% of those will be solved by the graph database now. Does that, does that make sense? And that's why we keep chipping away at this. Yeah, and, and, and Keith, it, it, this is the real world. I mean, as you can see, you know, it actually goes down, it comes back up. And sometimes we get some tough problems that Marvis doesn't answer, right? And yeah. so, so, uh, and so, you know, the, the fact was we started measuring this about uh, May of 2018. Uh, since two years, each column here represents a week. And so any given week, the problems that, that come in will be different. And so we just have to constantly learn and chip away. And, and so uh, the end-to-end -end view now will help this, right? right? Um, what actually, you know, is interesting, you know, um, I'm going to first point you to the July through February 2020 uh, piece. Uh, we'll come to the uh, post-COVID era a little bit. But if you look at July uh, 2019, through February 2020, our 
organizations, the number of users on the MIST sure. cloud grew by about 200%. The number of managed devices uh, grew by about 280%. The, the number represents for the overall picture here, right? But, you know, so basically number of people using MIST, number of APs using MIST is growing exponentially, right? We're having a, a phenomenal uh, run at this market. Um, however, our average number of support tickets is, is predominantly flat, right? You know, if you look from August through February, predominantly flat while we grew exponentially. And we attribute that to not only us getting fewer support tickets, but our customers actually getting fewer tickets happening uh, um, within their environments as well. Let's talk about sort of the, yeah, the post. Sophia, can I ask you a question? Uh -huh. When we look at trouble tickets and we look at, you know, like the 2080 rule where 20% or less of our trouble tickets actually take us, you know, 80, 90% of our time. And then, you know, 80, 90% of them don't take much time. Do you have a perspective, not just on the number of trouble tickets, but the timing aspects? Yeah, so actually, the, great question. Thank you. So. So let me actually then explain the colors a little bit, right? So, um, so the problem tickets are actually true trouble tickets, meaning where a client had an issue, an AP had an issue, a switch had an issue, something, right? Question tickets are random people. You know, we, our documentation isn't great. So our questions have to go down. Internal tickets is, is, is our, our supporting POCs. And new customer tickets is a brand new customer that comes in and opens the support tickets. We track that because we want that also to go down and we attribute that to is our documentation good? Is our, is our you know, first customer experience good? So the problem tickets, we actually within that have significant list of categories underneath it. Yes, we, so we actually track hard problems, you know, you know, you know, and there's lots of categorizations. Uh, maybe I don't want to reveal all of that, but uh, is, is underneath that. And so, uh, yes, we do have categorization of, of rare problems that are hard to troubleshoot versus easy problems, uh, but they happen all the time, right? So we do have categories for that. We just haven't broken it out here. 